Brian, I've been doing some reading on dark reading, CISO online, and even a Gartner blog post recently, all on the topic of NAC. And one thing I found quite interesting, there's a common theme that runs across all these publications and these analyst opinions. Complexity is still top of mind when it comes to NAC. In 2024, I thought yeah. we solved that problem. Why is NAC so complicated still? It is complicated. The thing is that they don't have to be. So everyone is having the assumption that NAC access control is all about 8021X and certificates, PGI, and all of that. That's the main assumption, which is complicated. I agree okay. to that. What we try to do, especially with Fortinac, is to have an option for being less complicated. You may already have an SNMP community string in your infrastructure. Why not use that and use the SNMP or SSH sessions or APIs to get information from the infrastructure and then use that information? It's already there. It's easy to implement. It's easy to use. All right. Before we get carried away in the weeds, let's share a whiteboard and you can walk this through with me. Let's say this is a typical enterprise. You've got users over here. You've got devices everywhere. You've got wireless stacks. Um, you've got switching stacks. It could be Cisco, Aruba, whatever. Yes. You'll have syslog devices here and there. You have routers. You may even have network taps. You might have SIMs. You've got applications. You've got databases. Oh, and most importantly, you have IoT yeah. stuff connected everywhere. In the modern enterprise, this is quite common. It doesn't have to be a large enterprise. It could even be small businesses. This is the reality for many organizations. Yeah, I agree with you. This is a very typical environment. You have IoT devices, syslogs, switches, different vendors, firewalls, users, etc. We want to do some maybe basic SNMP communication, but we want to put Fortinet somewhere in the picture, yeah. right? We need Fortinet to be in line or, let's say, in the center of that. So let me just put it in there. So right now we have 49 in the center of your infrastructure. So what you're saying is NAC goes into the center and all these devices feed data into the NAC solution. It can be an inline solution or it can be out of bound, as in this example here. And crucially, the way that information is fed is SNMP. It can be radius or it can be uh, many other ways where we leverage the data of the network around us. Is that correct? That is correct. One of the beauties with Fortinet is that we see NAC pursued as complicated because we equal that with radius A to 1X, which can be complicated for sure. Yeah. I agree. But a symbol is in each wrap from the switch to the NAC is not complicated. Okay. Even old Cisco switching can do that, right? Less complicated the, the and easier to deploy. I hear what you're saying about NAC implementations. You have a decentralized approach. You have a centralized approach, which is technically when it sits in line, which could be quite disruptive to uh, existing networks. And then you can implement it in a way where it feeds off taps and ingests data. But what's interesting is that there are many other vendors that do it this way that have options of in ingesting data from an SNMP perspective or a radius perspective, yet consumers still say it's complicated. What's your view? What's driving the idea that NAC is too complex to implement? As we discussed, it's because most of our vendors for the NAC start with the 8021X discussions, whereas 40 NAC is formed from starting the SNMP discussions, which is this complicated. Mm. So it's not that our interpretation of NAC is truly unique and is wildly different to our competitors. Other vendors are doing something similar, but what they lack is once they gain that centralized visibility, it's the integration story that can then happen, the control part and the automated response part. The reason probably why it's viewed as a complicated technology is because most consumers or businesses are left on their own to figure out, okay, now I've got this visibility, what do I do with it? And I think that's probably the missing piece that most people cannot get to. Would you agree with that? I would tend to, to disagree a little bit 
in the sense that all of the vendors in the NAC market, let's say take the top five vendors in the NAC market, more or less can do SNMP and radios as we just talked okay. about. But we started that discussion because we think it's complicated, mm. which is because most of the starts with the radio part, whereas we would like to start with the SNMP part that are less complicated. It's not that they can do it or we can't yeah. do it. We can all do it more or less. It's the flexibility and it's where we start. And one more thing to finalize on that is the amount of infrastructure components that we support with Fortinac is huge. Yeah. Even older system switches that don't do radius, you can use that with Fortinac, right? right? So it starts with a story that try to get it less complicated, but it then involves into that we support big variety of vendors in the market, which makes it easier to implement a NAC in your solution. Got it. I've got a statistic here. It's probably out of date, but it's like 170 vendors, 40 NAC support. Yeah, I think oh. like now it's like three and a half thousand different infrastructure components. We should support mobile Cisco switches that don't even do radius. Uh, we can still do some stuff with that. But it all comes back to less complicated, easy to install, easy to get the visibility. Yeah. Build your confidence that the endpoints is really your endpoints. And be aware that all of this is non-intrusive. We don't change anything. We don't interrupt anything. We don't change any VLANs. We don't kick one out or anything like that, right? It's all about getting the confidence to the endpoints and to the connection. Got it. So if there's any account teams listening, a good starting place is to ask the partners and to ask our end customers, do you know what is on your network? Truly what is on your network end to end? Likely the answer will be, well, we have some idea, but we're not totally sure. And the follow-up to that is, well, are you yeah. okay with that? Uh, and of course, we can implement 40 NAC in an invisible mode, which is non-destructive, non-intrusive to the existing network, chances are many of these organizations are running SNMP environments already. So leverage the SNMP communities that are already configured and set up in somebody's network. We will start with the visibility phase. All of the insights that we get from that part, which is non-intrusive, take us to the next step where we can do the access control based on the insights. Once we have done the access control, we can even potentially go to the third part, which is the automated response, where we can take some actions on incidents like malicious client, then shut down the switch. On the topic of integrated response, this is a slide that I often use in EBCs that demonstrates the capabilities of the 40 OS NAC features. This is the free NAC features that are in 40 OS. I call it FOSNAC. Actually, somebody else called it FOSNAC. FOS as in 40 OS and NAC as in NAC. So one thing I like to demonstrate is how powerful this feature is. I go on at the end to say everything I've just shown you here does not require a license. It does not require any additional NAC license and it's completely bundled in to 40 OS. I always have follow-up questions to this, which is great, but it just really demonstrates what is possible in 40 OS. So in 40 OS is a hypothetical situation. You might have an iPad that is running an outdated version of iOS. Now, using the native inbuilt NAC features within the 40 gate, you can onboard that device into your environment and immediately assess that device's capability in terms of its version of code and how vulnerable it is. For example, you might have a yeah. policy in place that says, if you're running this version of code on your iPad, then we will want to put you in a more restrictive zone because that version of code is susceptible to some kind of vulnerability. And so once you've onboarded the device, you can put it into another policy set that has stricter IPS controls. So you can change the VLAN association to one that is more restrictive. Now, think of this in terms of IoT and headless devices that don't have a user interface or are not able to be patched or upgraded. Suddenly the conversation becomes really interesting because you could onboard IoT sensors like fridge 
sensors or freezer sensors in a warehouse, once that device has been onboarded, you can automatically put it into the correct VLAN that has the correct security controls that you want to associate with headless IoT devices. That is incredibly powerful. Yeah. And to think that this is all bundled into 40 OS is an incredible thing. I think we should all be talking about this. I like to see this uh, in similar way as I see that the 40 OS or the 40 gate can do some authentication, can do radius authentication straight out of the box, right? And it can do NAC stuff straight out of the box, which is super great, super strong feature, but it also has some limits. Yeah which is where you then bring in your centralized SAMLO server, like for your authenticator with tokens. If you have many 40 gates or if you have many switches and stuff like that is when you bring in Fortinac. You can also bring in Fortinac when you are confident to the identity of the endpoint needs something else that you cannot yet do in mm. FortiOS. It might be that you want your Fortinet camera, which the photo OS can detect, but you want to make sure that it is your admin credentials that are used on this one, which means that you can ask Fortinet to do an SSA session to the camera room, log in, evaluate the output. If that's a success, then you are even more confident that the endpoint is actually your IP camera, room, which is more than you can do on the building Forti OS. So it's a great starting point. And then you can bring in the Fortinac as needed in the discussion. Brian, can you talk to me about some of the practical use cases where we can ingest Fortinac visibility into the wider fabric ecosystem? Some examples on how our customers are leveraging this would be great. Sure thing. Fortinac can bring visibility via our fabric connector. We can see what's on, on the network. The most important part is that we can bring tags to the connection or to the endpoints that Fortinac can send to the FortiGate. So in your example, you have PLCs, you have printers. Yeah. We can put those in the same VLAN. Let's take the example. We put them in VLAN 140. Yeah. Then you can bring in a 40 gate firewall policy saying that VLAN 140 can talk to VLAN 200, where you have your SCADA is already in server, which means the printer actually can have access to that SCADA historian server, which you don't want, but you also don't want to create it too complex and more VLANs yeah. and all of that. So what we do on the Fortinet side, we send the tag when it's a PLC device, because Fortinet has identified it as a PLC right. device in the visibility. We send the tag to the FortiGate. This is a PLC device. Now you have on the 40 a firewall policy saying that in order to talk to your SCADA historian server on VLAN 200, you need to come from VLAN 140, which is the generic VLAN, but you also need to have the tag from 40 NAC saying it's a PLC. Otherwise, you cannot hit that firewall policy and you cannot send across the traffic that you need. Which means that it's way, way more secure than just having everybody in the same VLAN. Okay. Without being complicated. <laughs> so I, I feel a buzzword bubbling up in me right now, Brian. Isn't this almost intent-based networking? Some people call it micro-segmentation, but for me, it's not really micro-segmentation because micro-segmentation is also that you, on the same switch, can't talk from switchboard two to yep. three. There are some people that think that the tag story is related to micro segmentation, but not for me. I just stick to the fact that do it less complicated, fewer VLANs, use the tags as your source in order to identify your firewall policy. Everybody can do that. Everybody can achieve that. It's easier and therefore more secure. And what if the tag changes yeah. let's say we thought a printer was a printer but it actually turns out to be a coffee machine that's connected to the network what's the dynamicness of tags being updated yeah that's the intelligence of the 40 night to detect that well on switchboard two it's no longer a printer it's a coffee machine right because we can revalidate once it connects right we can revalidate if you unplug and you plug in can revalidate 
and then redo the tags as needed. So easy, very secure, and you can narrow down the communication of what can talk to what, basically. So only if you had a policy explicitly stating that the coffee machine can talk to SCADA devices, would that be enabled? Otherwise, it would default back to who are you and what do you want? That depends on your firewall policies and your ranking on that. Might It might be that you allow everything on VLAN 140 to go to the internet, but to talk to your SCADA historian server, you need to have 40 Mac PLC tag tied to the connection. Let's talk about where we are today with 40 Mac. This was an acquisition from 2018. Where do you see most of the success happening now? And what do you see in the future? I see a great journey from the acquisition. So we started our conversation around the complexity. We look at it from a radius point of view, which is complicated. Bradford was founded on the idea of doing SNMP less complicated which was one of the triggers for Fortinet to acquire that company. Bring in NAC, do it less completely, something that we can mm -hmm. talk about. What we have done in the last six years is amazing. We have changed most of the GUI into a Neutrino 40 West style. Fortinet was, correct me if I'm wrong, the first product to actually do that outside of the 40 West uh, ecosystem. We recently also moved away from the OS layer. Redford or 40 NAC in the beginning was based on CentOS. It's now based on NAC OS, which is a 40 OS modified to be NAC. So obviously you are involved in some of the large scale global deals that involves NAC. You're heavily involved in those sales cycles and the sales motion to get NAC into these organizations. What's keeping you busy at the moment? Is there some kind of specific technology or integration story that everybody is keen to know more about? Yeah. So what's been hot topics has been all of the customers that are moving from on-prem directories into either a hybrid or pure cloud with Azure Infra ID or whatever they choose. That's a very hot topic for us at the moment. Also, large scale deployment. We see more and more large scale. You're talking about half a million endpoints, wow. right? Okay. That's also a hot topic. Brilliant. Yeah, of course, with the shift to the cloud and in many cases, the reverse of that, large parts of your infrastructure are moving around. So naturally the question is, how do you get that visibility and how do you extend out there? I have to ask a question, zero trust in NAC environments, what's your take? First question I would say is, what do you want to happen when you disconnect something from your network? If you just disconnect, mm -hmm. the port stays in VLAN 140, good or bad. If yeah. it's bad, have 40 NAC to switch the VLAN so that it comes to a default or isolated VLAN. That's zero trust. From my perspective, once you come back, you start from zero trust, AKA no access. Then you get revalidated. That's zero trust. Okay. I love it. That's the shortest answer I've ever heard when I've asked about zero trust. What would <laughs> your parting advice be to anybody that is still listening to this video in relation to 14 NAC, in relation to the fabric, in relation to solution selling? I would really emphasize everyone that has been listening, if they are still us with at the end, that 14 NAC is all about easy visibility, put Fortinac into the discussion, get the visibility. It's non-intrusive, learn the endpoints. Then you can always come back three months later, six months later, talk about what we have learned, start bringing the access control, and that's it. That's where you are, you're confident on your access layers, on your access control, and it's good to start with. Brian, thank you so much for your time.